Hello, and welcome to another chapter of a tome pulled right off the shelves at the heart of the Jackals. This is Rygar, Part 6, Ignited. Let's get to work. Korvoth didn't know where to find this city carved into glimmering stone, but he felt that his feet might have a pretty good idea. He'd been walking all day, every day, for the past two weeks straight, through forests, around mountains, over hills and valleys, pushing constantly in the same direction. Every time he came to some obstacle, be it a river, a cliff, a chasm, or any of a dozen other dangers, his toeless feet began to itch and burn, until he figured the problem out and began to make progress once again. So it was with this pestering sensation that he hunkered down, glaring at the massive knot of a serious consternation stricken upon the path set before him. Hundreds upon hundreds of golems, amassed in a writhing knot of unlife, seething in the only passage through a vast mountain range, which stretched for a thousand miles in both directions. The towering heights capped in permanent spikes of white. Korvoth sometimes had to walk around obstacles. But even a few hundred feet and the scorching agony in his sharply angled flipper feet was almost too much for him to bear to move on anymore. This... this would not do. So he had only two options left to him, and both of them were of course shit, but at least one had a ray of sunshine within it. So that's the one he picked. It could be a little fun, suicide to charge into the knot of lifeless killers anyway, but Korvoth did have that third life hanging over his head to protect, and he really did not want to see what special secret misery Soth had in store for him when he lost it. So he had to isolate one or two golems and set this fiasco into motion. He'd already witnessed a few of these faceless jerks break off from the cluster when a bird had landed a few dozen paces from the outer perimeter to go chase it off. There'd been ten or twelve at the time, but Korvoth hoped he'd figured out a good solution for that as well. He took out his gear, glanced back to check the other stashes, buried the need to scrape the skin from either of his feet, and chucked the cloth ball tied around a stone attached to the longest vines he could find. It bounced and skidded to a halt near the end of its length. Six golems lurching up from their huddled positions, dragging their plodding feet toward the new threat. He retreated, hoping none of them would catch sight or scent or whatever it was these things tracked prey with. Korvoth took a few calming breaths and then observed the golems poke at the ball with the tips of their spears and stone axes. After an absurd amount of stabbing, they all lost interest and began slowly dragging their lifeless limbs back to the main group. Korvoth noted that some were slower than others. After making a quick judgment call, he threw the second trap ball and this time only three answered to quell the threat, and they seemed much more listless and lost in their efforts. Intriguing. Korvoth repeated the process till only one was left, and then a few more times. The reason he was standing in only shorts instead of ragged pants he once wore. A few rocks had failed, but... He'd made enough that he'd been able to lure the last golem far enough away from its fellows for his comforts. His feet felt like they were melting. He could barely even take it anymore. He'd never had to retreat from an obstacle on his trek this far. And this was pure torment. He had to finish this fast. Otherwise, he might have to hack off his feet just for a sense of relief. 
He threw a stone at the golem, landing a blow right in its chest. It snarled in that direction, but Korvoth was already throwing another stone at it from a different place, keeping the monster confused and off balance, taunting it as much to do damage as to study the way the creature reacted to him. It did tire, eventually moving even slower than it normally did, stopping to rest and scream without a mouth more and more in frustration. He kept it angry and defensive, slashing at the air, till he closed in and bashed it with his stone axe, knocking it to the ground and slamming his weapon home repeatedly with rage upon the box in its chest that was the source of its life. Even after it uttered a pathetic, pleading whimper, Korvoth continued to slam his weapon home, just to be sure and just to enjoy every impact. Finished with the blazing rage cutting through his spirit, he relented, falling exhausted onto his rump. The pain in his feet faded, but returning ever so slowly, the easy part over. And now the real risk begun. Korvoth set about stripping the canvas-like cloth that was the creature's outer skin, and would be his mask so very soon. And so it is. Our time together has once more come to a close. I have been Lotharan, and this was Rygar, Part 6, Ignited. Another tale from the heart of the jackals. Go ahead, Korvoth. Yes, sir. That's the end of the story today, folks. Please leave all your comments, questions, and kindnesses down below. Don't be a jerk, though. Don't forget to stay safe out there. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to show your support. Good night and good luck. See you again tomorrow. Wait, I'm forgetting something. Um, oh yeah, that bell. When you subscribe, make sure you click that bell so it gives you notifications. We post videos every day and you don't want to miss none of them. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.